So to start with, you will want to go to zotero.org. And the first thing you'll want to do is make a free account. You can start that here at the login screen and register for a free account. We suggest that you use a personal email and not your Duke email, because as you know, if you leave Duke, your email account will be cut off pretty much the day you leave. So make it with a personal email so you're not always having to set up or change email addresses in your Zotero account. Once you have registered for a free account, the next thing you'll want to do is download Zotero. It's important that you have all of your Microsoft products closed for this process. So save and close anything that you currently have open, even PowerPoint, um, before you click the download button. That just means Zotero will integrate with your Word and PowerPoint easier and you won't have to do it again. So Zotero is smart and recognizes the browser you're in. It, you will need to download both Zotero and the Zotero connector. You can connect any browser you want. And if you use multiple browsers, download the connector in each browser. The only browser we don't recommend is Safari because the connector is always in beta and you might encounter some bugs. Um, if you're willing to accept that, go ahead and add it in Safari as well. But um, we suggest Firefox or Chrome instead of uh, Safari. So once you have downloaded Zotero for your operating system, you can also find other platforms here if you're not on Windows and you've downloaded the connector. Um, you can open Zotero on your desktop. You'll also note that depending on your browser, you may see the connector in your add-in section here. In Edge, you may have to click into the settings to see add-ins, add um, but this icon will change throughout this recording, so I will try to draw attention to it when it does. You can also use Zotero online. You don't have to use the desktop app um, if you would like to uh, you just log in using the account you just created. And it takes you to your web library. So if you're using a library computer or you got a loaner laptop because yours is broken, um, you will still have access to your Zotero library and all of your resources. The next thing to do once you have opened Zotero is to sync your account and connect it to Duke. So by for that, you can go to Edit and Preferences. And under the Sync option, you can link your account. You will just log in here. And if you frequently make changes, you might want to click Sync automatically. Um, that way, I'm not having to manually click this Refresh button in the top right here. Um, but every time you open your account, it should sync with what's online if you have made any changes elsewhere. The next thing you will want to do is come over to the advanced tab and click um, a resolver. Make sure you have the https colon slash slash before get it at duke.library.duke.edu. And then you can click OK. There are other preferences you can change here. Um, including the uh, export style, any styles you need to add to their most common ones, but I will let you look at that another time. One thing to note is that Zotero can host PDFs and other files in the reference manager itself. You only get about 300 megabytes of storage. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to run through that um, free storage. So if you need to store a lot of PDFs and other files in Zotero, you can upgrade for $20 a year to two gigabytes. It would be pretty hard unless you're storing big, big image files or something in Zotero to run out of space with that 20 gigs. 
Um, but if you need more storage, you can click the upgrade storage at any time. You can also, if you're done with a project and need to clear out PDFs, you can also um, purge your storage to clear out the current PDFs once you've moved on from a certain project, for say. OK, let us go back to the Zotero app, and I'll just draw your attention to a few things. So when you add sources to Zotero, they all enter this box that says My Library. You can create multiple collections or groups, um, but any source you download, and I have been downloading many, comes into this My Library tab. Underneath it, you can break it up into collections, say for different papers or classes or topics, and you can just do that by either right clicking your mouse on Windows or clicking this folder icon in the top. You can use Zotero for groups. It's great for collaborating with people either at your same institution or not. Um, and you can do that here in um, Zotero app by clicking new group, or you can come to the groups tab in Zotero web version and create a new group. InNote will allow you to collaborate with other folks as well. However, Zotero is really good across institutions because if you create a private group, you will be able to share PDFs. The important thing if you want to share PDFs with your group members is to create a private group. So when you set it up, click this private membership group. I'll create one now. And it shows me what the URL will be. And if I was doing this maybe um, for a book club or something, I could create a public but closed group so that people could see it online but would have to ask to join. But if I want to share the actual PDFs or actual sources among my group, I need to choose private. I'll click Create Group. And I can change the settings for writing, editing, and file editing for this group before I create it. I can also change it after creation. Um, but if the group is going to be quite large or if you're the main like PI or something on a project, you may want to uh, set anybody can read the library, but only admins can change the library if you don't want people to accidentally delete items from the library. Um, you can choose no group file storage. However, uh, that would eliminate the PDF sharing properties that Zotero has. So I'm going to set this as open as possible to any group members and click Save Settings. To add people to my group, I will need to go to Member Settings. And um, I do not currently have any invites, so I need to click this Send More Invitations. You can use either Zotero usernames or email addresses to add people to a group. And so if you have, if you know you will be using Zotero with your group, you may want to um, get their Zotero usernames so that you're sending the invite to the, their account that already has a Zotero enabled and they don't have to make a new one with their new email address. And once you have multiple people in the group, you can click update roles. And that would allow you to change owner, admin, group member. But since I'm the only member of my example group, there's not much to change. You can, again, change the library settings at any time. And you can also change the name. You can set a discipline. You can give a description. You can delete the group once you're done with it. And you can set an image if you need to. OK, let's go back to the app and talk about other things you're currently seeing in Zotero. So one of the things you can do is change the um, columns that appear in Zotero by right-clicking. Um, and you have a lot of options. So 
it comes with just some basic like creator publication attachments. I currently have date added, but um, if you needed a project that only had sources from a certain year, you may want to add year. So I will just click here and I could sort this um, on the year published. Oldest to newest, newest to oldest, that sort of thing. I can also unclick that if I no longer need that column. Uh, another thing to look for is the attachments. So you can see that there are various types of attachments in Zotero. Some of these are just a web snapshot, but there's also a small PDF icon, and we will come back to that later. Not all of my sources have an attachment. Some of them are just um, the citation. So let's go look at one. Zotero is only as good as the information that is in it. So when you are adding sources to Zotero, you will need to check the information the source comes with. I exported these from PubMed earlier. So I will want to check that the type, the title, the authors, the publication. Right now, this one is missing an issue number. So I would want to be sure that if this has an issue number, I add it. I would add it here in Zotero and not each time I add this to a Word document because it would save me a lot of time to just fix the source here in Zotero. So that's something to note if you are adding a lot of sources at once. Just be sure to go through before you move away in PubMed or any other database from those sources online, make sure you have double checked this citation or that you have a DOI to go back and check it later. You'll also want to check pages, and um, if your source needs date access, you would want to add the date here, of course. I will also show you what one looks like with a PDF involved. So this one does not have very much information from the source. I don't even have a URL. I would have to go search this title again. However, it does have a PDF attached. So I can open that in Zotero and double check the PDF and see if there's any information in here. I can also highlight and annotate PDFs in Zotero and it will save it for me. Okay, so there are several ways to add these sources in Zotero. The first is to just, if you've been in different databases and you've been downloading PDFs, I can drag and drop PDFs into Zotero. I will want to drag them into my library. And if I close this, you can, I will sort by date added and they will be at the top. So you can see that it is looking for metadata. Metadata is information in the PDF file that comes from the publisher that helps Zotero load this citation in. So all of those are loaded in. You'll note that Zotero automatically attached the PDF I gave it, but you'll notice some of these are a bit more robust than others. This first article that was uh, imported, it has the volume and potentially a page number, but it does not have the publication, the date accessed, a DOI or URL. There's very little attached with the PDF. And that is just the publisher did not provide much information. However, this one is a lot more robust. I have the DOI. I have an ISSN for the journal. I have the date, pages, volume, issue. So if you're dragging and dropping PDFs, you'll definitely need to double check each of those resources to make sure the citation is correct. OK. Another thing you can do is export from a database itself. So let's go to PubMed. Pretty much every database is going to have 
a way to export these PDFs or citations into Zotero. And you can do it either from the database or using the Zotero connector we downloaded earlier. So I will search kittens. OK, a few things to note here. The first is that you can see that this has turned this icon in the top right corner, the Zotero connector, has turned into a folder. I'm going to click this folder and it will give me the option to download these articles that appear on the page. So if I thought all of these were relevant, I could select them all, maybe not these three, click OK, and they would download into Zotero. I'll just choose a few, click OK, and they're saving to my library at the moment. You'll note that it just says PubMed entry here. We'll come back to that. OK. I'm going to click into this article here. And you'll note again that the Zotero icon has changed. It's now just a single source. This time, it found the open access PDF. If you want Zotero and PubMed to kind of work together on that PDF, it's best if you're in a single article instead of in the full list. You can also tag this article when you're putting it into your library. We'll come back to tags in a moment. Another way to send this to Zotero is to click the send to button in PubMed. You can click citation manager and a file will download for you to open. Um, but it's probably faster to use the Zotero connector unless for some reason you're on a library computer or not your own laptop and you don't have Zotero downloaded. Um, sometimes you can, you, or it's being buggy, you may want to use the send to button. Again, you could also just download the PDF and drag and drop it into Zotero. So you have plenty of options. And you'll see we have a link here. We have a very robust citation and we have the PDF. You can add articles from PubMed via another two ways into Zotero, and one of those is via PMID. Each article in PubMed has a PMID, so I am going to copy that and then go back to my Zotero library. And using this magic wand button here at the top, I will just copy that in and hit enter. It will load for a moment. And you'll notice that it copied in and has the PDF full text attached with it. Another way you can do the exact same thing, but from other databases or websites easily, is by using a DOI. Make sure you copy the entire DOI before going back to Zotero and again clicking the magic wand and then pasting that in and hitting enter. And now it's there. You can add sources manually as well if they don't have sorts of digital identifiers like books or works of art. You can add those here with just the regular plus button. But if you're working in an academic database or on a journal website, the magic wand will be a little bit faster. Okay, so now let's talk about um, how we use Zotero. So first you can tag articles. Say you wanted to tag it with like your class paper, like nursing 625. You can tag that and then search by tags later. And it would 
pop up with the one that has this. You'll also see that um, there are tags provided by the publisher. So maybe if I search kitten, the ones that have kittens as a tag will be included. So you can use tags to organize your library besides in just collections or groups. You can also set related papers. Um, I've not personally used this feature, but it's just another way to connect items in Zotero. Let's talk about how to use Zotero in a Word document or PowerPoint. You can also use it in Google Docs. I will try to show that in a moment. So the best part of Zotero is that you may never have to type a reference, references or a bibliography, you may never have to type a bibliography ever again. You'll notice that I have a Zotero tab here in Word, so I will navigate to that. And we're going to pretend this is an actual paper and not a document I just made, and that these are sentences that have sources I need to cite. There's two ways to do this. You can click add edit citation and the first time you do this in any new document it will ask you the style you want to use. A lot of people use APA, the newest edition, so I will click that, but you can also choose Chicago, um, Nature, MLA, American Chemical Society, like any citation they have like 10,000 styles in here. So if you are submitting to a journal that has some specific style, you can go click manage styles and find the style you need. I'm just gonna click okay. And now I have the option to quick add a citation. I will just put, you can type anything into this. So whether it's a name, a portion of the title, part of the journal, I will type kitten. Ah, there we go. And I'm going to click enter. That inserts the citation into the sentence. I can also um, edit this citation. So if I realize that there needed to be more than one, I can hit enter here as well. If I want to, if I'm not recalling like the uh, name of the article, I can look in my library at the classic view to add a citation. So I could go and search through and find the paper I want to input. Important to note that you can also change how the source looks in this moment. So if you needed to add a page number or a book chapter or the line of a piece of poetry or something, you can choose that here and add the text that needs to be added in this certain citation. You can also click omit author. I'm not sure that's entirely relevant in APA, but in other styles, if you typed the author's name in the document, like in the sentence itself, you're not supposed to repeat it in the citation. And so if you click that, it would just show the date for APA. I will add two more. here. I'm just going to do a quick add and click enter. So once you have written your paper and you're going along and adding citations as you go, and it's time to add the bibliography, the work cited, how, whatever style you're using, you can do that all at once. Zotero will know what you have inserted so far. And all you need to do is come up and click this add edit bibliography. And boom. There is your bibliography all written out. If you have checked your sources in Zotero, you won't necessarily need to edit this. You can give it a look and just make sure no, uh, nothing's buggy has happened, that everything looks the way you're expecting. Um, but if you've done every, changed everything in the app, the sources should pull over correctly. Now say in APA, this isn't relevant because it's, um, in APA, this isn't relevant because it is alphabetical, but say you're using Chicago or another style that um, uses endnotes or and does it chronologically. If 
you were editing the paper and you needed to change the order of the sources, you can. And if you hit refresh, then the bibliography would update. You, I can also change the style if I realized that it needed to be different. So now we're in nature style and you can see these are chronological citations. So if I move this sentence up and it says four and five and one here and I hit refresh, it has updated the citations for me and the order of the bibliography. So this will save you a lot of time if you're submitting to journals and they require different sources or if you did the wrong citation style right before you submit your paper to your professor, you need to switch it. So Tara will do that for you. And now just a quick note on using Google Docs with Zotero. I will not demonstrate it again, but I will show you it looks just a little bit different, but the functions are the exact same. So if you look at the Zotero button in Google Docs, you can you have all the same options that you have in Word, like add or edit a citation, add or edit a bibliography preferences, which would give you the citation styles refreshing if you need to change the order of your sentences or your citations and unlinking the citations at the very end. I will note that um, I will note that Zotero does not work in Word Online or any of the online Office 365 products, but you can use it with OpenOffice or LibreOffice. The last item you need to do before you submit your paper either to a professor or to a journal is to do a very important but permanent step to your paper, and that is to unlink the citations. So you'll see if I click into this bibliography, I get all this gray highlighting and any one who isn't a part of your Zotero library, which is going to be most people reading your paper, uh, we'll also see this formatting if you somehow submit the paper without unlinking citations. However, just know when you click this button, there is no going back. So if you think you might have to make further edits or additions to this paper later, you will want to save a version that's still connected to your library where you have not clicked this button. Maybe you put live at the end of the file name or something. And then once you have saved that, save a dead version for submission and all you have to do is click unlink citations. You'll get a error message that says, there's no going back. You won't be able to use Zotero to make any further changes to this document, are you sure? And you can click, okay. <laughs>